Welcome back. It is the Flow Friday Sports Show on Flow FM and River Murray Netball is our next destination on the show. And our new correspondent for this league, Pat Brown, is joining me on the line to tell us everything ahead of a big round one starting tomorrow. Great to be speaking with you, Pat. Appreciate you coming on and being our correspondent in this league. How are you going today? I'm good, thanks, Dan. How are you? Very, very well, thank you. Very excited for uh, winter sports to be arriving this weekend. I know some leagues have already kicked off, but, uh, yeah, pretty much everything's starting this weekend, so it's very exciting. And, Pat, before we do get into the first round of games in River Murray Netball, I'll just ask you to share a little bit about yourself uh, with our audience who may not be familiar with you. Yeah, um, well, I started playing netball in the 1960s, I started coaching and umpiring in the 1980s, so that gives you a bit of an idea of how long I've been around. It does, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I moved onto the river, or my husband and I moved onto the river in 2003 to retire and give up netball, and I was back coaching for my longer in 2004. Short-lived I retirement. Had, uh, a number of successes there, and um, yeah, coached some of the association sides a little bit and sort of helped out where I could and retired when COVID came. All right, well, very good. And now I'm back out of retirement again. Yes, we're pulling you out of retirement to uh, cover the league for us. So it's great to have you. Uh, Great to have someone who's obviously got a a vast wealth of knowledge about the league (laughs) from being involved for so long. So let's get into the uh, action that kicks off this weekend. The first game is taking place at Meningi at 1.50pm between the Kurong Cats and the Ramblers. So that is our official first game of the season. It was a tough season last year for the Kurong Cats. Uh, How are things shaping up for them this year and how do you see this game against the Ramblers going? Well, this year the Kurong have a totally different side. They only have three players remaining from 2023. So they have a, a number of new players that have come in. Hopefully it'll bring better results for them. It would have been an eye-opening season last year coming up against some of the previous RMA teams like Maipo and Imperials and that for the younger new players from Kurong Cats. But I think they would have learnt a lot last year. And I'm sure they will come out um, destined to get better results and learn. And I think that'll be their main thing. They'll be learning as much as they can from the other teams and then take it back to their club and just continue to grow from there. So they're not a spent force, they're a growing force. So I think new players will bring new things. And how are things shaping up for the Ramblers this year? I actually took advantage to go and watch them train last night because I thought it might give me a little bit more info on the team. And uh, they are a very balanced team across all playing positions. It was interesting watching them last night because they're all pretty much the same height and everything like that, so there's no major problems there. But the coach, Tanya McPhee, has, um, is a very experienced past player, and she seems to have created this atmosphere of player feedback during training, they constantly stop and talk about it from all different aspects. And this appears to have cemented a very strong bond around the team. So they'll have high hopes to do better than they did last year. I think they will be a bit too strong for the Kurong Cats this weekend. And I think Ramblers should take out the victory. But um, both teams will definitely bear watching through the year. All right, the tip's in for the Ramblers over the Cats in round one as we move on to our next game, and it's Jervois taking on Maipalonga. So the reigning premiers, uh, Maipo, they're back and they're travelling uh, to Jervois for their first game of the season. Uh, history will show you over the last X number of years that uh, a lot of people would just assume this would be a easy win for Maipo. But Jervois uh, have uh, some new players back in their side, Um, past players that have returned. They have a playing coach who has instigated a new system of an assistant coach on the sideline that she can confer with when she needs to update her information because of her involvement in the game. So that's a new thing for Jervois in having that extra backup. But they're doing a... They've incorporated five of their into-one players into their AA res squad. And some of these young players are really, really good. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how they develop over the year. To them, it's probably a bit of a shock coming up against the reigning premiers. But MyPost team this year is not the MyPost team of last year. 
This year, they've, uh, the uh, baby bug has bit a, a couple of their players. Plus, they've lost a couple of players that who would have been in their A-grade team to uh, a cl- to Nairn from the Adelaide Hills area. So how that will impact on their selections, I haven't actually had any confirmation as to whether they have recruited outside of the club or they're just bringing up their A-reserve players. But I still think they'll be strong enough to win the day. All right, tips in for MIPO there. And Jervois sound like there'll certainly be a team to keep an eye on. Some interesting things happening there. As but... these young players develop, yes, they will, because they've got some very good inter, a lot inter players. So. Yes, it's always interesting when the, uh, the the young players of the club break through and play some A grade, and it, it can certainly yes. uh, be a changing of the guard. So we'll be and watching that game clubs closely. And I love that do that. That bring up their bring up their kids. They don't look to outside. They look to bring up their kids, and that's what it should all be about. All right. Well, are we seeing any of that in the Southern Suns versus Imperials clash at Lamaru tomorrow? Southern Suns, who finished just out of the four last season, have had significant changes to their side. They've, they've lost four players, but they've gained six. So those six are basically, effectively, a whole new team on court. So Imperials won't know... Any, anything about these players and how they've actually combined in pre-season trailing. So I, I anticipate that the Southern Suns are not going to be the team that we saw last year. And uh, although they just finished outside of the final four last year, I'm, I certainly believe with these six new players that they seem to have a lot of confidence in that it could be a slightly different look for the Suns and competitively I think they'll be that bit stronger and Imperials finished second last year so they're no uh, easy task to take on however they themselves have also had changes they have brought back a number of their senior players into their A grade so I'm a little bit concerned as to what players um, Kerry Daniels is uh, the coach of Imperials, and she's still running with a squad. So um, she's keeping a close eye on who may make A and who may not, unfortunately, end up in the A reserves. But for them to bring back three past players, and the pe- and people that have been around will know the names Ali Anderson, Crystal, and Laura Burling, just makes me wonder actually who they have lost. But Carrie's keeping that very closely guarded to herself. So they may not be as strong as they were last year, but I still think they'll take out the game tomorrow because they don't like to think for anybody to think that they can't. They are very uh, strong mentally and physically, and that's how they'll take to tomorrow's game. So I think it'll be a win to imp tomorrow there as well. All right, certainly will be a different landscape in the league this year and we'll keep an eye on the Suns and the Imperials, a couple of last year's finalists. And last but not least, we're almost out of time, but just give us a quick run through of Manham and Taylor Bend. Uh, they're playing at Manham tomorrow. Mally Storm are on the bye, so we'll cover them off uh, next week when their season begins. But uh, yes, Manham taking on Taylor Bend tomorrow. Manham and Taylor Bend will probably be the closest game of the round. Uh, Manham are very strong, very committed, tired of being the bridesmaids, would love to be the bride. Uh, and that's how they will take this game. They've had a new a goalie return to them, a centre court player that did an ACL come back feeling like she's the fittest that she's ever been. And they've got two of the most experienced defenders probably within the league. Tail and Ben have their, had their shares of ins and outs as well. And they have bought up from their A reserves as well as bringing in a new recruit from a Adelaide Hills club as well. So both teams, I would say, are going to be very interconnected to each other and very much we want to be there at the end of the season. So they'll come out on tomorrow's court determined to want to get the two points under their belts, both teams. I think it will go Manham's way because they will be more settled in their combinations. Uh, whereas Tail and Ben, if anybody knows Tail and Ben, you never just assume they're gone. They never do. They always come back at you every quarter. So tomorrow I anticipate that to be the um, closest game and probably the hardest fought game of the round. So uh, that'll be a good game tomorrow. And that's actually the game I'm going to watch tomorrow. 
All right. Well, we're looking forward to getting your analysis from that game next week then, but you've done a fantastic job previewing all those games for us, Pat, full of information indeed. Been great chatting to you for the first time. Thank you very much for all that, and I'm looking forward to speaking to you again next week. Enjoy the game tomorrow. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much.